In the previous video, we covered the design category, talking about the density, collectibles, scope, play length, and the creative vision. Moving on, we're going to be talking about the layout in this video, going over the play space, the terrain, the player path, the icons you're going to be using, the transitions, and your major mechanics and those icons. All right, first up is the play space. So if anyone has any guesses, uh, you might be guessing what, what map that is that we're looking at. This is a Halo map, right? And this is Valhalla. All right, so this is a 2D uh, representation of the map, and this was done by a fan. Um, but this pretty much showcases the overall level uh, of the, the overall geometry and the overall play space of that map before it is a 3D image. All right? So take a look at the overall map that we've got here. Let me turn my pointer on. Right, so take a look inside here, right? The green space, that is the gameplay area. That's where the uh, the gameplay happens, right? That's where the player can get to. That's where they have access to, is in that green area. So all of these rocks and the snow and the, the boundaries of the level keep the player contained and keep them immersed in the world. If you just had the green uh, area with no surrounding geometry, the player would be able to fall off the edge of the world and get out of world, which might be okay for some games, but that's not what we're going for in Scraps. We want to immerse the player and think about the boundaries of the level. All right, so first you're going to define that play space. Define where that happens, where the gameplay takes place. Then, after that, you're going to include those visual boundaries and barricades to limit where the player can get to and what they can see. It's definitely the next level of thinking after you have the, the gameplay in place is, okay, now the player has control of the camera, right? Scraps is a third-person game that the player can control and move the camera, right? So if we're making an isometric game or even a game like God of War where it's basically a film, it's a set that moves from one set to the next and the camera is still, you don't have these issues, right? You might, you run, you might run into a different set of problems, but because... Uh, Scraps is a third-person game where we have control of the camera. You, you want to take that into account. What if the player is standing here and facing this direction? What will they see? So put in place some geometry and some borders and barricades that limit what they can get to and what they can see. All right? So that's what the, the play space is all about and the, the overall level border. All right, then finally, you can add in any type of set extensions. And I, uh, this is a term that uh, I learned from going through the game art slash computer animation program to where the first part of the degree, it's very much um, centric on just modeling objects and modeling for film, right, or for movies. It's not spe specifically in games. And one thing I learned in there, um, one of the many things I learned that I could apply into the game world is these things I like to call set extensions. Right, so a good example right here in this image is this waterfall. Okay, this waterfall doesn't need to be here, right? They could have just closed this off and had more rocks, and you know, maybe the river comes through and pools up or some other way, or maybe there's no river at all, right? But that waterfall, it adds more interest and more detail into the level, and it makes those boundaries feel natural, not just a, a large wall surrounding the game. So these set extensions are things that the player can see, but not necessarily get to, right? Say we have a, a scenario where we're in like a, a subway station, we're on the train tracks, right? Part of the train tracks are broken off uh, and there's debris in front of us. We can see beyond the barricade, but we can't get over there, right? Those are set extensions that make the environment feel larger than it actually is. This links to a video that I'm gonna include down at the bottom this shows the use of green screens and blue screens in, um, in film. And just to show you um, where the, the overall shot is taking and everything that's added on to after the fact. So you can, when you watch that video, you can think about uh, applying that to a game to where everything that they're shooting is the gameplay and the surrounding environment is just in a set extension, just adding on to, but the player can't physically walk over there. All right, so the, the detail that you put into your map is a direct uh, connection to how well you're going to be able to implement this into Unity. So if you put the effort and the detail into the map, this will be your blueprint and your guide 
when you actually build this in 3D and will make level design um, much smoother than if you um, avoid putting in the details now and try to build it inside 3D. So now you'll go forward and you'll see this is that map rendered out in 3D, right? This is from Bungie. This is a top-down perspective of Valhalla, that same map, right? And you can see all of those details as it transitioned are exactly in place where they were, right? We have the river running through the level, that same waterfall. We have the two bases on the left and the right with the rock uh, edges, all those specific rocks and objects were in those locations, the crashed um, ship over on the, the top hand side, everything is uh, how it was in 2D. It's very, you'll see it is a direct one-to-one -one they lay over the top of each other. 